Hey everyone, I'm Pacific the Casual Gamer and welcome back to another video on Call of Duty. And today I would like to talk about the campaign, just uh, what I thought about it. Uh, this video is probably not going to get a lot of views, but who cares? I want to talk about the campaign. So, uh, when in my experience, a, how should we call it, an edgy campaign, like, very clearly, this campaign was meant to be, ed we'll say edgy, it was more along the lines of... Let's take real-world issues that were supposed to be a thing in MW2 and 3 and actually apply them. Because MW2 and 3 took place in the future when they were made, right? MW3 was made in 2011, took place in 2018. They didn't know all these issues would be happening. So uh, I think that for the Call of Duty audience, you know, Call of Duty hasn't been that game where it's like you play it. I mean, there's a couple games where you really play them and there's a good story that takes a political stance or a, you know, makes you really feel like World at War did a really good job at that. Um, this game's story, for me, doesn't, it does raise awareness to political issues, and it does it in a way without taking a side. It's a game where you play as the good guys. You don't play as the villains and that's fine because it doesn't it's not like you're playing to be the good guys because we don't want to make you an evil person we don't want you to play as this character that like kills all these civilians it doesn't force that on you it's just you play as the good guys and that's all you do and you are it's it's a lot of a definitely navy seal simulator if you, if you play as uh, Alex or if you play as uh, Sergeant Garrick, either way, you feel like a freaking, you feel like a beast when you play this game. I played it on realistic. I think that if you can handle the difficulty and the amount of damage you will take, realism is the, the way to play this game. And beyond that, if you can play it and not pick up weapons and stick to the weapons you're supposed to use, I really liked it. I have never liked playing Call of Duty on any difficulty above regular because, unless it's for the challenges. If it's for challenges, I'll play it on Veteran. But just, I didn't play this game for challenges, and I played it on Realism, and I had a great time. There's a couple spots where I uh, damn near punched my screen. But those spots were far and few between. I really, really enjoyed the gameplay, you know? There was a lot of standard, like, all right, let's run and go behind cover, shoot the people, go behind cover, shoot the people, go behind cover, shoot the people. You know, that's the, the core gameplay loop. And that's fine, because there's a lot of different types of missions sprinkled in. I would say, um, if you guys didn't read the title, there's spoiler warnings. I would say the mission with the Juggernaut, that sequence was fun. I had a fun time. I like how they took the Juggernaut and in old Call of Duties, it was like the first Juggernaut you fought was the boss, and then it kind of tapered off and the Juggernaut was an enemy. This Juggernaut was a boss. He took a lot of hits, and you had to play really smart. It felt like uh, one of those bosses in Resident Evil, and it had such a good feeling to it. And I like uh, another mission that I really liked was the sniper mission with the white flags. I thought that was a cool reference to the older Call of Duties with the whole flags in the wind. And, I mean, of course, this being a game and that takes place in between Modern Warfare 2 and 3 and a game that's supposed to revamp the series, I thought it was really cool that they picked this to reference. They picked the whole flags and snipe the people. And there was real consequences if you didn't snipe people. Like, the, the, where the trucks came up, if you didn't shoot the people in the trucks, you had to fight more guys in close quarters combat. I thought that was really cool how it wasn't like, okay, you didn't kill the guys, you lost. It was, you didn't kill the guys, you gotta deal with them, you know? They're, they're still coming, you're gonna die. I thought that was pretty cool. And there's a couple creative parts. I thought the RC explosive planes were really uh, a fun mission. I, there wasn't really an AC-130 mission. I mean, there's segments that were kind of like AC-130s. I didn't mind that. I thought that AC-130 missions felt gimmicky in the Call of Duty games. Like, it was cool the first few times you play one, and then you 
you go to play it again and you're like, God, God, just, oh my God, hurry up and let me, let me end this, you know. There wasn't really a scene where you were stuck in a truck shooting people. I thought that was a really smart decision. There wasn't a ghillie suit mission. And this was interesting. I noticed that there wasn't a mission where you ghillie up and sneak through. I kind of thought with the whole wilderness aspect, that was one mission they could have done really well, was include a mission where you were a sniper in a ghillie suit and fighting others. You know, you guys know the drill. I think that... What are they doing? Oh, good. The cats have taken out the lamp. But I thought that they could have... I think there was potential. That's the one thing I wish. The stealth missions did not feel unfair, and they didn't feel gimmicky. Uh, stealth missions in previous Call of Duty games felt extremely gimmicky. This one... Really, these stealth missions, especially the one towards the end of the game, where you were like on that at that estate, that was really fun. I enjoyed that mission. I and I don't I don't like stealth stealth based missions in an action packed game, but that mission was awesome. Like the missions are fun to play in this game, and I think that's when you have a you know, the story was okay. You didn't, like, cry when Alex sacrificed himself, right? You can see that from a mile away. Uh, you didn't feel really sad when the, the uh, Kareem's father died, you know? Because it's a video game. It's If it's not dedicating itself to telling a story that makes you feel emotions, you're not going to feel emotion. What it did do was show why Commander Kareem was this um, badass... Like, she wasn't a badass woman because she's the woman lead that you would have expected from a, a Call of Duty game. She was a badass, not because she was a woman and it's a Call of Duty game, but because as a child, she had to kill people. As a, I guess, it's technically teenager at 18, she had been tortured in a gulag-style prison and broke out. You know, and then there's a cool thing where this guy's like, I'm Lieutenant Price instead of Captain Price. That was kind of a cool throwback. Um, it, it was showing how she met him. I thought it was gimmicky that he was a lieutenant. They should have just... That's kind of like when you take Master Chief's helmet off and show his eyes. It, it gets rid of the mystery behind Captain Price. I thought that wasn't a smart move. But it's just a fun campaign. It's fun. The storytelling elements tell you the story if you feel emotion you do um I, I, god i feel like there was a part in this game now that i'm remembering playing it there was a part um where i felt an emotion it was one of the ones where the russians were like killing the villages where i felt genuine like sadness you know you're just badass and you can't do anything. And it hit me. It was, I was like, oh, God, this, this mission sucks. You know? So I thought the campaign did a really good job. I had fun. Uh, also, the part where you played as Garrick and you couldn't save the guy with the bomb vest on, uh, that was... Uh, it was emotional. The one where the guy killed the kid, that was emotional. Uh, and it was like... I don't know, it just, it's a good campaign. I think of all the Call of Duty campaigns, uh, World War II was really gimmicky. I didn't play, Infinite Warfare I think is more fun. The game itself sucks, but the campaign is really fun for Infinite Warfare, because I'm a space nerd. Uh, I would put this one and Infinite Warfare, Infinite Warfare was more fun. This one had more impact felt more clean, there wasn't a lot of, there was like, I wasn't bored during this campaign at all. You know, it was, it told its story with good gameplay. What more could you want from a Call of Duty campaign, you know? Uh, I, I haven't really played Spec Ops, it sucks in my opinion, I don't like it. I played like two missions and I'm bored with it. So yeah, if you are thinking about playing the Call of Duty campaign, play it on regular, unless you are more skilled, then play it on realism mode. 
Like, those are the two modes you should be playing this campaign on. And you will not be disappointed. It's, it's a good campaign. Worth your time. Uh, there's a lot of some sensitive topics, we should say. I, I mean, I already talked about a kid got shot in the campaign. I mean, that's already won. Uh, lots of... Like, th okay, let's put this into perspective. This campaign, you know how World War II tried to show you all the death and destruction, and at the very end it threw the concentration camp gimmick in? That campaign... Think of the, this campaign as if that campaign succeeded. Minus a little bit of stuff. Jesus Christ, cats. Stop trying to kill each other and just get along. Alright, so that's my review of the Call of Duty Modern Warfare campaign. It's fun. That's all I gotta say. If you enjoyed, tell me in the comments below. What do you think of the campaign? Uh, were you, are you one of those people that got suckered into crying? Are you one of those people that thinks it's stupid? Are you a political activist that thinks it's retarded? Are you like me, where you just wanted to feel like you didn't waste your time? Tell me about it. I'm Pacific the Casual Gamer. I suck just as bad as you do at video games, and I'll see you guys in the next Call of Duty video.